Hi, welcome back to Yesdra Technical Channel. Today, I would like to talk about WebRTC, about what WebRTC is and how it works. So, what is WebRTC? It is an open source project that enables real-time communication without plugins in the browsers. It is basically a collection of Java APIs, mainly including get user media, RTP peer connections, and data channels. These APIs allow you to use cameras and microphones to do video communications, or you can even do just simple file sharing. And I will share these three APIs in more details later on, because it's a huge topic. In WebRTC, the keyword is peer-to-peer. -peer. This means there are no server involved to transfer real-time data from one client to another. So, before I explain WebRTC, I think it's better to introduce WebSockets first because we always put these two together. So, what happened in WebSocket is, there is a connection established between every client and the server. Each step is relayed through the server. After all the clients connected to the server, if one of the clients change something and want to inform other clients, it makes a request to the server. The server processes the information so that client can update itself and have and contain new information. And then server will push the update to all the other clients. And what this process does is that there is actually a sort of delay there. So between the sending client and the server and the server processing all of the information, these two clients on the right side will have to sort of just sit there and wait normally. It is not a big deal. It's probably like one second for the server to proceed in all the update things. But there is a huge issue if it comes down to a voice chat or live streams, where one second can change a lot of things. What I'm going to say is, if we are just transferring files, this kind of delay doesn't matter. But if you are having a voice chat or video chat, it might bring you a bad experience. So after seeing all this, now we take a look at WebRTC. When I say that there are no servers required for WebRTC to work, it's not completely right. At the beginning, browsers don't know about each other, so a signaling server required initially for the client computers to get connected. But once the connection is established, then these clients can communicate with each other without the need of having a server in the middle. WebRTC changed fundamentally the way we think of browsers. The browsers can actually directly communicate with each other and completely bypass the server. So this decreases the latency by a lot, because now the receiving one doesn't have to wait for the sending one to send some information to the server, and then the server to itself. So today we briefly talk about the principle of WebRTC, and in the next video we will update the WebRTC signaling process. We will talk about Stun, we will talk about Tan, we will talk about the ICE, all the stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video and want to know more details about WebRTC, don't forget to subscribe to Yearstar Technical Channels. We are going to upload tons of videos concerning WebRTC to tell you the secrets and the technology behind them.